Like people can be disgruntled, but no one's just gruntled. You don't have a, good, a lot of good like workers that are gruntled. I feel like I've been gruntled by you before. <laughs> Come here! Let's go, give me a flapper! <clears throat> Alright, All right. welcome to episode 92 of Amateur Hour. We're here at Brook Oven Pizza in Lumberton, enjoying a nice Sunday lunch. Um, before the Super Bowl, and I'm here with Troy. Hey, hey. And uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Spring League that's going to start on March 5th. Um, March the 5th be with you. Yeah, March the 5th be with you. Um, Cinco de Marzo. So we have it online now. You guys can sign up. It's $275 a team, and usually we're only, we've been only taking eight teams, so... If you want to get in, get in soon. Um, it's first come, first serve. And Spring League, I think, is my favorite uh, little league we do. It's, to me, the most fun. The weather's the best. It's kind of cool. And, um, you know, people kind of miss football, so I feel like everybody participates a lot more. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not having a tournament this winter like we normally do. Um because I think people love the seasons when they love playing in the season. They love the – and that's how I've always felt. I always like – always use the tournament as like a warm-up for the season. I didn't take the tournament as serious as I take the uh, the season. Um, no, but I think with uh, the, the season builds up over time and you, and you build to a championship and you're not playing everything over in, in one weekend. So I think it's uh, – that's what people like. And it's easier to get people to do that instead of getting everybody on one weekend, I guess. You know, it's easier to get a full season in. Uh, well, yeah, and with the season, you know, you play one game a weekend. With the tournament, everybody knows at this point you're like two or three games on Saturday and two or three games on Sunday. And people are just tired. Yeah. And it's just an all-day event. Whereas the season, it's one-hour day. And then at the tournament at the end, the playoffs, maybe you're there for three hours or four. Yeah. So it's a big-time investment. And the reason we try to have the tournaments is it is a lot more bang for our buck as far as money. And the tournament money helps us pay for shirts and you know championship belts and stuff for the league. So if you guys in the future could sign up for a tournament, it really does help a lot Yeah. Um, to get insurance and everything else we use for the league. Um, we still are at zero dollars profit for anything we've ever done, <laughs> yes. so, and we like it that way. We don't want to make any money off of this. We just want to have good, cool stuff to give y'all uh, when you win, and um, have videos and all that other stuff. I did see the a new team has uh, signed up. They're called the Goats, and the captain is says T Brady as the captain. So I I don't know who that is, but it's a new team. I'm excited to see who that is. Yeah, um, I, I saw that they signed up the other day, and this guy is extremely high maintenance. He uh, requires a lot of information. Um, he wants different angles for the film. I yeah. told him I don't have that, but he's he's subpoenaing me. Yeah. Got uh, several f- uh, freedom of information requests for the, the film that I'm hiding. Yeah. And then he had, like the, one of the players I saw is, 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 is A. Brown. So I'm not sure who that is, but those, those are the two players I saw on the roster so far: T. Brady and A. Brown. Well, and where uh, A. Brown signed the waiver, he didn't write his name. It was just a. It looked like he dipped his butthole in ink and sort of just. As you as one as one would do, which we do take markings. That's fine. It just seemed odd. Really weird guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> yeah, so Troy, you wanted to talk about the creation of a flag football playbook i just think it's we've been trying to build a new playbook for our team the herd um with all the new young kids well now they're they're not young kids anymore anymore. they're basically adults now some beards out there (laughs) yeah but uh just the evolution of of a playbook when we first started the herd back in 2007 yeah there was no playbook there was we ran our swing routes well, we had an idea, and yeah. the idea was there was two blocking backs, and they didn't actually block. 
they ran little bubble outs, and Wilson was the quarterback. So people would run little short routes, and he would hit the people out of the backfield to make the defense back up. Then he could go down the field with the ball. That was just the idea. Yeah. There were no real plays. And and it worked almost to perfection. We That first season, we went undefeated and won the championship in a very good league. I mean, there were a lot of great teams in that league, and it worked. Um, and then over the next – few years and man, we had some good athletes on that team too that could run that offense and could get open so over the next few years we started changing players and we lost a lot of momentum and we our offense we, we would get in the huddle and everyone would tell Matt what they were going to run yeah that and, was several years <laughs> yeah and what I did and I got I got very selfish in this time because I was thinking I just I felt like I was the best player on the field. I want the ball. Let me get the ball and see what I can do. So what I would do is after we would break the huddle, I would sit there and wait for everyone to leave, and I would stand right next to Matt and say, Matt, I'm doing this. Because the last thing that Matt usually heard was what he was going to throw, no matter the situation. So I would sit there and wait for everybody to break the huddle and go, and I would say, Matt, I'm going to run this, or I'm going to do this. And he would go, okay. And I would usually get the ball in those situations. Because it was the last thing that he heard, and, uh, and there, well, and well, I think there's other things that go into that. Like a lot of those years, we really didn't have very consistent receivers. Yeah, and he knew you would catch the ball. He knew where you would be because we had a lot of guys who didn't never they never played receiver. They were yeah. like linemen, or they were just people that never played football, and weren't great at doing that thing. So yeah. I think. Like, you know, because he would throw to Bruno, too. Yeah. Because Bruno knew what to do. And he would throw to uh, me because I knew what I was doing. But we had... We didn't have... And on the outside, we had nothing know, we on the had outside. we had nobody It was on the just outside. random people filling in almost every week. So, I think it is because it was the last thing, but I think it also is that it's like, okay, cool, I... I know that you'll actually go where you're supposed to go. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody else wasn't even running a route. Exactly. Or, or if they were, it wasn't like a real route. It yeah. was kind of a half-ass out. Yeah. So about 2014, 15, we started. We had a little change at quarterback. Matt was out for a little bit, and we had uh, Noah Cole come in. And we had a kind of a big change of p- players, actually, because Aaron Long was kind of the captain at that time and brought in a bunch of his friends and family and – it was a brand new team basically and we decided and all these people would show up consistently every week so we would actually have practices so what we decided was let's create an actual drawn out playbook and we did and we sat there all of us sat there together and created like eight to ten plays and put it on a playbook and everyone knew their spot and what they were doing every play and we would call it from the line and it was made and, for Noah yeah and and it worked fantastic because he could he would sit there and call the plays at the line, and we all knew what was going because everyone knew their play. We even had a defensive playbook at that point, and we got really good. And uh, and that was when the fight happened in the Beaumont League, and we decided to create our own league. And then that offense, we carried it over to the to our league. And the first two seasons, we just dominated people because we were better and more organized. Well, yeah, We'd we played. had more experience. Probably. Yeah, so there were two or three good teams. The rest were just not any good. And we dominated that league for two years. And then eventually, as our players started to move, Noah left, Matt came back to, as quarterback, and we adjusted our offense again, and we kind of lost our way a little bit because it was – Well, we also Matt had an aging run, population. Yeah, and Matt didn't run the <laughs> offense the same way as Noah did. So we kind of adjusted again, and we kind of went back to uh, – there were less plays in the playbook, I think. We kept a few in there, but we kind of adjusted down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we tried to change again, then we changed again, then we changed again, and, and then we had – and Lucas came in to play quarterback, and we're adjusting up again. And now we're back to a – we're getting to another point where we have a full playbook. As long as – but the thing about the playbook is you have to have consistent people at the game and know what to do, what the routes mean. When you see a route or you know what the depth is of a route, you know what it means when you say run a dig route or whatever. Um, so it's not just a playbook itself. It's players – and showing up and being consistent because that's the main sure. thing. You can have the greatest playbook ever, but if you have six different people on offense every week, it's not going to matter. And that's where I think we kind of fell off, and I feel like we're going to trend back up because we have consistent attendance. Sure, and, you know, 
other teams have done it a bunch of different ways. I think the Showstoppers had a good thing going where they just had a few numbers, but everybody kind of knew where to go fill in on uh, open spots in the field. And Jake could, you know, he played quarterback, could call. He read the field great. He, he would read it and then call like a thing or two every now and then. But other than that, like Williamson on the outside would know, hey, if they're 15 yards off, I'm just going to turn around. Yeah. That's that to me is the most advanced form of flag football is yeah. when you get there. And the they're, Jack boys are somewhere in that region where they just sort of, they know they need to spread the field out. They know how to get open. They can just yeah. get open. And, even, and even if they don't get open, they're going to make you miss. Sure. That's just and, out And athlete. TT can throw into a window that's tiny. Yeah. Um, so I think, though, in the your flag football journey, you do need the playbook part of it. Yeah. Because people kind of need to know where to go. And then once they hang together for a while and they have those – ideas kind of crystallized like we did in 07 because that was after years and years of playing together yeah you know and then we were like okay we're gonna do a swing we're gonna get you and brandon the ball and everybody else really does understand where to go in a general way i think that's where you're i think that's the ultimate where you're trying to get to and and i'll even take it back to before the herd started when i was with the cones walt and jake i'm talking about the cones again no you don't like it but i'm talking about the cones again we start when we were re- we were terrible, and it was I was probably the best athlete on the team, but I was at blocking back the whole time, and it was we couldn't do anything. And then when we, when Travis came on, Travis Mains came on to play quarterback, I was still blocking for him, but we just and we were not we lost like the first three or four games of that season, and we decided we're the two fastest guys on the field. Let's just line up and run the option down the field. I'd line up behind him, and he would just point behind his back, left or right. He'd take the snap, and we would go. The receivers oh, the best running flag football offense. The, the uh, receivers, <laughs> we never told receivers what to do. Just go 10, 12 yards down the field. On the outside, go just run up, the, just run a go. That's what we would do, and eventually all that stuff opened. But we would run it 60 times a game. That's all we would do, just him and me running the option. And nobody stopped it for that rest of that season. We won that championship. We did throw some deep balls because it opened up. Yeah. But as he's running downhill on the option, then he would throw it downfield. Um, it was it, it feel it sounds so rudimentary and basic, but it was revolutionary in that time of flag football. It really was because well, nobody was running the option. I think really. when you do things like that, it gives the quarterback who it's not like regular football where you have like real blocking schemes yeah. or anything. It gives them something definite to do every play, and like a I can pitch it, I can throw it, and there's not just you know a, a thousand things going on in your mind because yeah. you just only have a couple of options and i really think especially if you're starting out if you can just give your quarterback one or two things to do every play it's way and if if it's none of those are open there's no intentional grounding so just yeah spike the ball yeah that's why i think really a cares. playbook doesn't need to be more than eight or ten plays yeah you can run things to both sides you can and you can still stuff, do can trip stuff you can do motion and you stuff. still can yeah. do backyard football yeah. and go okay this play just get open See what happens. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. And then if you've got a guy or a few guys that are really good and you know, I just need to get them the ball in space and let them make people miss, you don't even have to run plays, really. You just, like, that's how we started out at the herd. Well, we were running plays. And JC and them do a yeah. pretty good job of, like, just throw it downfield. Yeah. Like, I mean, when he just throws it, it's always about a 50% chance it's going to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> so. And he has to throw it 45 <laughs> yards to make a 30 yard He always completion. throws it, though. Like, yeah. that. I think that's their best play. Either that or Byron was running out of the backfield, and you know. Yeah. But that play opens up the Byron play where he. You know, yeah, bubbles and that's out what the like the, the deep stuff opens up your short stuff. The short stuff opens up your deep stuff. It's just everything complementary. If you have to complement things, if you're, everybody's running deep every play, it doesn't complement anything. Well, no, until you throw yeah. it deep and make and complete it, yeah. and then they back up, and yeah. you throw short stuff. Yeah. You have to. Uh, it's football is still still based on complimentary things on offense you just have to like that's why that's why crossing routes work that's why you know smash always works because it co- one route complements another route it's not just get open you know get open works from time to time but it doesn't work as an offense all the time yeah well uh, anything else about playbooks or? no i just that was on my mind we hadn't talked in a while and i just since we were building a new I playbook i thought you. it was fun I know we've been rubbing feet under the, the table uh, here. Well, getting, I've been rubbing feet it's with getting, you. It's getting heated. There's a lot of static electricity. I notice your feet keep moving, and I have to keep grabbing. Well, I can't let go of the microphone because of all the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we're going to do another segment in a minute uh, about 
Super Bowl and all things related to that. So stick around. We'll have some predictions and revelations. And Corinthians. I can't wait to meet the superb owl. <laughs> yes, we'll have that too. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's that? 152. Okay. <laughs> Time mark. You don't like all that, <coughs> that extra the pre-afterbirth? I only like the pre-afterbirth when it's after the pre-birth. Yeah. See? See what I did there? Pre, uh... Anyway, so, uh... <laughs> the, the Super Bowl is going to happen next Sunday. <laughs> or, and, the, or this Sunday. Well, or the, I don't, whenever I get around to putting this out here. It could have been last um, Sunday. Yeah. And our predictions will sound very... Um, Remember when I predicted everything that happened in the uh, New England-Philadelphia Super Bowl? Yeah. It was perfect. Like, every single thing that happened mm-hmm. will never happen again. Nope. It'll never happen again. So, I guess then... We should call a, back to that. We should go back and listen to that. A good... Yeah, I'll go find that one. A good uh, way to start is, what are your predictions for the Super Bowl, Troy? Um, uh, it's kind of a weird one. Yeah, like, I don't know who's the better team. Like, usually you know, go in knowing this team's better than, than the other team, but I don't know who's better. Like, I didn't think Philadelphia was all that great until I watched them just destroy San Francisco with their, front, yeah. their defensive front. I didn't realize their defensive front was so good. Um, I still, I mean, I still don't have a lot of well, Mahomes belief is a little in, the, bit hurt. in the Philadelphia offense. Like, yeah. I mean, I feel like that can fall apart any minute. Kansas City, I never have a problem with their offense, but I feel like their defense can struggle at times. Uh, so, I don't know. It feels like, I mean, honestly, I don't have a really good feel of what it's going to be. I, I, I can't say, I just can't bet against Kansas City. Yeah, they've been so good for so long. Philadelphia is kind of like all of a sudden good just this season. So well, now I, I think I'll take uh, Chiefs. We'll go or we'll the me and the mouse in my pocket. We'll go. Uh, <laughs> I, it's been a bunch of strange scores. So I'll go twenty two sixteen Kansas City. You're going with low scoring game. Yeah, okay. I think it'll be low scoring. Mahomes ankles hurt. Both their defenses are pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll go low scoring. 22-16. I'm, I'm going to say 24-14. Kansas City. Kansas City? Okay. I, th- I think it's going to be kind of a boring game, actually. You, you know that, that – that, uh, And I would settle for that as long as there's like kind of a – well, it's a little close. I yeah. don't mind it being not super crazy. Just, I, I just I, want to be close. I, this, this, remember how that uh, New England – uh, Ram Super Bowl was like thirteen to three. It was like a really just boring game. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think this is going to. I think what I feel is Kansas City is going to get out like twenty one to three or something, or no, or like twenty one to seven or something. Yeah. and then it'll end up being like twenty four. But I think 14. the reason those games get boring is because everybody's coaching in a way that they're like, okay. Yeah, I honestly think that means they're making the very best decisions they can. <laughs> so, yeah, everything just fits together. You know, they're like, okay, we have a lead. We're going to keep with it. We're not doing anything off the beaten path. Uh, so I, I don't mind boring as long as there's some scoring and it's not a blowout. That's, yeah. that's those are my. I don't think things. it'll be a blowout. I think it will. I think it'll get. It'll be like the scoring will happen early and then it will settle in. I think that's what I think. Thank you very much. Yep. So I, I think there'll be some. The first half will be high. Will be where the scoring happens and then it'll be kind of like. A few little things here and there at the end. But then it also could be a 49-42 to 42 game. It would be fun to have a really high-scoring Super Bowl. I don't – there's not a lot of those, you know, at least close ones. Yeah. Because I know there's been some big blowouts like Dallas beat freaking uh, Buffalo one time, 52-17. Um, and there's – in those the 90s there were a bunch of NFC blowouts and um, – I don't know, we've had some good Super Bowls in the last few years. It hasn't been as yeah, bad. I think, yeah, I mean, like the last one I remember just that was just boring was Seattle-Denver when Seattle won by like 40 points. Yeah. That was terrible. Yeah. But, um, well, yeah. I hope it's a good game. Um, but 
I have a Super Bowl question for you. Super Bowl question. Yeah. What is your most ideal? Now, you, you could not have experienced this before, so it can be hypothetical. Most ideal setting in which to watch the Super Bowl? On my recliner at my place by myself with no one else around. Alone and by myself with my dog in my lap. Do you have the ability to text anyone, or I mean, is this just? Oh yeah, no, only I'll you. No, I'll communicate through texting or whatever. But to say, hey, that was, look at that, or you suck, or whatever. <laughs> but other than that, just sitting by myself. What is the worst <laughs> setting <laughs> in I'll, which? I'll be, I'll be serious. So seriously, the, uh, the my favorite setting would be. I always said it would be cool to go see a Super Bowl live, just because the the whole thing. But I feel like. Would that really be that fun? Because the fun part about a Super yeah, Bowl, no. the whole fun part about a Super Bowl is the TV event. I think. Right, I think so. so. I don't think I. Would, oops, That's sorry. me. That's feeding my again. Foot. We're feeding again. <laughs> We're um, feeding. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I mean, I would love to see a Super Bowl live, of course, just because I'd love to be there. Yeah. But the best setting, I guess, would be like maybe at some kind of event there. Maybe like in Las Vegas or something at a. That would be neat. And like a, a, a sports book or a, a casino or something that has like a big party going on where everyone is there. You know, it could be people you know, people you don't know, but I think something like that. It's some kind of big event. I think yeah. that would be a cool spot. Well, and you know, I've watched Super Bowls at people's houses and yeah. little house parties and stuff. And to me, it gets old hearing the, especially older folk, just complain about national anthems uh you, you and i talked about this before the yeah. we started recording but like it gets and the people that don't know anything about football comment on stuff yeah it really annoys me but it, it it doesn't annoy me because they're loud and they don't know what they're talking about it annoys me because i know them and like them and i don't want to assume they're morons <laughs> so it annoys me much less if I'm at Buffalo Wild Wings and I can just sort of almost enjoy people saying stupid stuff. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't know and that guy. Com- He's an idiot. And then, com- and then comment yeah. on it, yeah. Because, you know, and also if I'm in a restaurant, or something, people elbow me and be like, yeah, I can't believe they let blah, blah, blah sing the national anthem. I don't care. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you who's ever sang a national anthem. Like, no, I don't care, I I don't tune in care at that. all. It's when stupid. It's on, when the like we said earlier, when we were talking about it earlier, when the national anthem comes on, if I turn on and it's on, I'll go do something for a few minutes until that's like over. a true American. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I will stand up and then walk away. <laughs> yeah, you're standing the whole time. <laughs> you're making some popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Or, or go to the bathroom or whatever. While you're standing up, you don't. Well, now yeah. it's not number two while the national anthem's on. I, it can't be. It can't. You're standing. You have yeah, to stand. You have to stand at yeah. attention. Everybody knows that. With my hand over my heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, the, and my hat in my hand as well. I'll take my hat off my head. Well, you still need to aim. I have, I have one hand on my heart and one hand on my hat. The other hand. The other hand. Yeah. But no, I think, I think what would be fun is um, a few years ago when they had the Super Bowl in Houston, I thought it would be really cool to go get a hotel room somewhere kind of on the outskirts so you're not like... Yeah paying a billion dollars and then driving into Houston to where, you know, Reliant is and going to the, one of the bars around there and watching the Super Bowl from there and like having like little outside the stadium Super Bowl experience. I thought that might be fun. Or if it's like, if, if it's your favorite team or something, maybe go into that, that city of your favorite team. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And to go hang out in one of those bars or something. Or if they yeah. have it at that stadium or something, they'll, play, they'll show it at their home no, stadium. No, that would be fun. I that think that would be, be fun. Something and like I, that. Yeah. You know, I think almost all these things are better than going to the actual game. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, the game's so NFL, corporate. NFL games are not as fun. Like, college games are awesome live with all the pomp and circumstance and the schools yeah. doing their own things. But NFL games are pretty sterile. And well, it's it's TV. Yeah, it's just TV. Yeah, you know. And Colin and I have gone to several of them, and we do enjoy them. But what's the most fun to us is the stadium, the city, seeing their own little quirks. Like Tennessee was cool. I mean, yeah. they had fat heads of like random linemen. <laughs> they were like cheering for some old dude who was like the tackle. Yeah, you know, you don't know. And it was real cold. So they were serving like hot whiskey and. Um, it was like a uh, high school stadium. You got, you got Colin indoctrinated into hot whiskey that when it was No, he, he was drinking cocoa. He was like uh, 12 or so. Um, <laughs> but 
yeah, that was fun. Like Kansas City was neat uh, when we went there. The fans were just obnoxious and yeah. crazy, and they were serving. Um, they keep bringing this back to liquor. They were, there were people passing out Jello shots in the parking lot at <laughs> ten in the morning. <laughs> we're trying to walk to the stadium, and he was like, "Dad, do you have some Jello?" I'm like, "No, son, not not that Jello." <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this Jello. But it was neat. And they, like Dallas's stadium was cool. You know, they were the most friendly. Like he wore his Colin wore his uh, New York Giants jersey but everybody was cool to him and nice and they were the most professional yeah. thing houston nobody cared no, <laughs> nobody cared about nobody anything in that place that's, that's not even like an event that's like <laughs> going to watch a high school game or something tampa bay the uh fans were a bit trashy yeah um and it was also the worst nfl game i've ever seen in my entire oh, life that's right. it was like what was it like, like three to three nine? Yeah, it was like yeah, I it remember was that. horrible. I remember there were texting, no like, touchdowns. You were so mad. <laughs> there was nothing. Um, like they played the cannon one time, I think, on a first down. They were like, "We got to play. We, we got gotta, the we ammunition here. This, we got to fire got these, cannon, these cannonballs. We got to take down the castle." I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do here? That is um, a neat. Kind of, it is a neat stadium. Though. It's oh, old, it was but very it's a, cool. I've been to that one. That's pretty cool. And we also stayed in a very sketchy hotel for about an hour, and then we had to vacate. So it was that wasn't the best. Yeah. Tennessee, I think, was my favorite because it was so cold and just. Yeah. Um, we went to the park. Grand Ole Opry. It was a neat place yeah. too. So yeah. Um, but no, I, I think my favorite setting though is kind of like you. I, I really do like to sit in my living room and just kind of like, watch the game because I pay attention better. Especially you know? if it's a team that I care about. Like if it's a game, if it's two teams like this, two these two teams I don't really care about. I, I wouldn't mind going somewhere and just yeah. watching it with friends or even just hanging out and watching it and getting drunk and. Eating food, but if it's a game with that your I dog, want, if, <laughs> you get Toby drunk. Yeah, if it's a game that I want to focus on, like if it's somebody that I care about, I'm gonna I want to focus on the game and watch what's going on. I'm interested in all that. Like I don't care about the commercials like I used to. I used to love watching the commercials. I don't care about that anymore. So it's well, they're too grand now. They're not. Well, it's uh, not even that. It's just like some anymore. of them don't even make any sense. It's like I don't no. even care. Like I just don't care about. Anytime a commercial comes on, when I'm watching TV, I turn it immediately. Like I just don't. I just this entertain me. I watch the Taylor Trading Company commercials. (laughs) I do watch those. (laughs) They're much. They're like. I mean, that's entertaining. I can't not watch it. I hope he has one. Just when you think it's going one way, I mean, it's it's fantastic. Could you imagine him having a Super Bowl commercial? I want him to have a Super Bowl commercial with with production and. (laughs) I don't know what I, I don't know what that would be like. He would have the Lord Jesus Christ in the commercial. <laughs> like the real one? Yes. <laughs> the I mean, maybe. <laughs> the, the resurrection. <laughs> and little old Beaumont. <laughs> we get him on the show one day. Oh, what a guy. That guy is a... He could be like a really local version of uh, My Pillow guy. <laughs> or, or, he's, he's pretty close to Bill Peterson, I think. <laughs> Oh, well, off topic, but uh, Matt Wilson sent me a video of a 911 call gone wrong this week, and he said, doesn't this sound like Bill Patterson? Bill Patterson? We haven't used Bill Peterson enough. We need to bring him back. Uh, uh, we're getting close to the 2024. And we... Oh, for Nearly the, flightless the, the election. Yeah, yeah the it's still going. Oh it's just been a long campaign I forgot season. About that. Yeah, they're gonna, gonna, they're gonna have so many votes in. <laughs> well, yeah, at least nine. Man, <laughs> the views uh, the similar to the views that we get on I our totally own forgot thing. about the election. I have seen some <laughs> of the signs around town. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah, weird really because, look close. It's weird because I live in Beaumont, and he, there's no. It's not even voting in Beaumont, but I see his. No. I see some of the. It's usually Bow Onion. They're headquartered. Uh, they're headquartered in Keechee. I think it's it's, it's Bow Onion signs. I don't think he understands. I ain't get it. Like he's jurisdictions and nah, stuff. Nah, he's, he's doing his best, man. <laughs> we need to we need to call back to that. Yeah, Re- anyone to. remember? Whoever's listening, Jake, Walt, <laughs> Jake's wife, uh, Walt's wife, Aaron, Aaron's wife. Um, That's it. The other people that listen. I want you to, I want you to remember, back in 2020, 2021, 20. I don't even. It was 2019. Well, sometime, yeah. When uh, Bo Onion and uh, Bill Peterson <laughs> started him, yeah. running for uh, election for the Flightless Bird Party. Yeah, we'll get. We'll uh, we'll touch base with them soon. Well, do you have any other Super Bowl 
items. No. Uh, were we, did we want to talk prop? Any prop bits, or did we? Well, no. I, I, okay. I did think it would be fun to have a prop bet about how many of the people you're around at your Super Bowl party grumble about the singing of uh, some other thing besides the national anthem. Yeah. But I, I, I couldn't get my I gotcha. information together very well. But if you want to play that game, you can. Well, how, here's here are some prop bits that I say. How many people will complain on Facebook about quarterbacks are too soft, they get protected too much? The number of people that have never watched a football game in – and since the last Super Bowl, that are complaining about NFL football. Yes, that's a yeah. harsh number. Yeah, <laughs> um, eh, I don't know. That's all I can think of. And also, uh, like if there's an Elm and Elm commercial where the Elm and Elms aren't hot enough, yes. <laughs> the people that will grumble about that. <laughs> that's why I don't like to go around people because I'm like, I, I just kind of want to watch a football game. This, I this is don't a person want, that's going to complain about I M&Ms. don't want your social commentary. <laughs> I don't even want your football commentary. Yes, like, we can talk the about thing, the cheese dip. The thing I hate worse <laughs> is the people that talk about football because I feel like I've been pretty educated and I've been around it my whole life. I coached it for seven years. And I've, it's always been a part of my life, and I feel like I know what I'm talking about when I talk football. And there'll be somebody that all they've ever watched is cowboy games, and that's all they've ever watched. But what it's, and, what's and it's like, it's just, that's all, they, that's all they know. They don't know any other team. They don't know anything else. It's like A&M people. All they know is what A&M has ever done, and that's it. And it's like, the, and they don't know anything about the sport, and it's so infuriating. But what's crazy is, the because it used to just be older people who really did watch football in a time where it was like a run offense always, yeah. you know. If you're getting into like 30-year-old people now to where most of your adult life, it's been a passing league yeah. where the quarterback gets protected. But it's like you still cling to this thing where you want Mahomes just to get absolutely drilled so you can watch his backup, <laughs> I know. Billy Butterfield or whatever. <laughs> Uh, go in there and crap the bed. I mean, do you think I enjoyed watching the NFC Championship game as yeah, a 49ers fan? Do you that's think I what liked you get. watching like, Josh Johnson and then have to have the, the guy with an injured arm at quarterback come back in to hand off the ball for the next thirty minutes? <laughs> do you think yeah, I enjoyed that? That's what you get when you don't protect a quarterback. Like, <laughs> and they even do protect now. So even with all that, like you know, as a Cowboys fan, because at Romo's beginning of his career, you could still destroy a quarterback and Romo got like thrown in the stands they look like a WWE thing a few times <laughs> so yeah I wish I could have seen what would have happened if remember how Tom Brady got his start because Drew, Drew Bledsoe got, Bledsoe murdered got well, on they, the sideline. there was a literal lion on the field <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean I mean you know, like when someone the size of a wildebeest. Watch how Steve Young got his start. Joe Montana got murdered by the Giants in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean. so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> like, is that what you want? That's a boring run, like uh, hand it off to, I don't know, Jerome Bettis and let him get four yards of carry and um, then real good four, defense. Four, you think he's getting four yards? Okay, three and a half. <laughs> Enough for a first down. And then play real good defense and win that 17-10 game. That's that's what you want. That's Those are the games you want. One of my favorite things about uh, running backs back in the day when Bum Phillips was head coach for the Oilers. You know, he was not a bum, though. No, he's not a he bum. He had a house and yeah. everything. Uh, he had Earl Campbell as his running back, and Earl Campbell couldn't finish during training camp. He couldn't finish a mile, and they asked him, "said So, what are you going to do with Earl Campbell? He can't finish his mile." And he says, "Well, if it's if it's third and a mile, I won't give him the ball." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, can you go four yards? Yeah, you got it, kid. I don't think Earl can go four yards right now. <laughs> No, he's got a little scooter. He can't do any of that. But I can but see a four yards in the, day, in the scooter. Back in those days, yeah. he was the man with that could run the ball. <laughs> do you have any closing thoughts? No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we're back on the mic. I'm yeah. really happy to see you. We've had well, a good time. Yeah. Um, well, we, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, March 5th. Uh, make sure you sign up by March 2nd. Everything's on the website, setxffl.com. And um, enjoy the Super Bowl. Please leave us comments if you'd like to make your predictions. And whoever gets closest on your prediction will get a free shirt. Free? Ex- uh, just ra- We don't even know what the shirt's going to be. It may not be. It may be an SETXFL shirt. It might be a little shirt. t-shirt. I it don't may know. be a... 
It may say uh, winner of the Warren Flag Football Tournament 2017. Those don't exist. <laughs> Who knows? Those never got made. Yeah, it could be a it could be a Kelly High School hat. Who knows? <laughs> You'll get something. I just made myself laugh. <laughs> You'll get something. Oh, uh, yeah! I'm excited. I can't wait to see everybody. Um, well, some of you. Yeah. Some well, of you. Um, I can. I can wait to see. Uh, I'll leave you with. Um, if you haven't seen Confession Killer on Netflix, it's a good show. I don't have any quotes anymore, so I'll just recommend stuff. Okay. That's, that's your. That's your quote. Well, that's is recommend. It. That's all I got. That's yeah. pretty good. I actually like that. Recommend something. It's yeah, I just recommend get, something. Keep people uh, thinking. Keep people on their toes. Nobody's listening at this point. So. Yeah. <laughs> who used to wa- who used to listen to this all the time? Was it uh, what was his name? Mitchell. Kim- no, I know Mitchell's listening. <laughs> Mitchell's probably listening right now. <laughs> He's not even here. He's probably tuning in from Lumberton. Uh, was it Joe Daddy? No, it wasn't Joe Daddy. Nah. There's no. people. Yeah. You got ghost listeners. I guess. <laughs> Thank yeah. you all. Thank you all. So what, uh, do you, what do you say? I don't remember. Oh, I do remember. Uh, friends come and go, but 200 pounds is 200 pounds. Have a good, good day. Luck. You got to say good luck one more time. You, start, you say yours again. Oh, have a good day. Good luck. Good luck.